In this video, we're going to talk about some of the most common 3D features that you're going to have, and they're probably going to make an appearance in almost every design that you make. This will be the fillet tool and the chamfer tool. The fillet tool basically creates corner rounds on particular pieces of geometry. And the chamfer tool does a similar thing, but it makes a break instead of a round. Let's take a deeper look at how to create a fillet. We'll invoke the fillet tool. And we have 3D preview mode enabled. You can see with this yellow cylinder. That means whenever we click something, we're going to get an instant preview of what it looks like. Now we can select edges or we can select entire faces to be an input to the preview. If you make an accidental selection or you want to unselect something, you can right click it in the entities to fill it list and select remove selected item. But sometimes you may not know which one it is. You may have you know, 15 objects here, and you're just not sure. You want to be able to pick it from the model itself. In this case, toggle off 3D preview, and now you'll be able to make any selection that you want. We'll toggle it back on, and there we go. Now, you're also going to need to do this in particular cases. For example, if I select this, uh, this edge is no longer selectable. And to keep it simple, it's because this edge was modified by this particular fillet here. What we can do, though, is we can just turn this off, and now we are able to select this edge. So just realize this limitation when using full 3D preview mode that sometimes you may need to manage your edge selection or your face selection with this preview turned off. At any point, you can change the size of your fillet, and we'll go ahead and press Apply, and then Close. The next thing that we'll talk about is a fillet option called Tangent Propagate. And what that does, and I'll demonstrate by turning this 3D preview off, is we'll select this particular edge and we'll turn off Tangent Propagate. So what this is doing is uh, when Tangent Propagate is turned on, it basically says, does the edge that we've picked have a tangent relationship with any other edge? And in this case, we do, right? We have this corner round. And so uh, if we were to turn this on, it's also going to go there. And then it says, okay, well, the next edge, does it have a tangent relationship? And in this case, it does. So we would expect this tangent propagate to go all the way down the list and then end right around here. And if we turn it on, sure enough, that's what it does. Now, another type of fillet that we can create is going to be a variable radius fillet. So let's select this edge and we'll change the object to variable radius. And here we can see that we can have a value of zero, or we can type a particular value that we want in. And you can define multiple objects simultaneously. And you'll notice that there's a list that gets created with the start radius and the end radius for each one. So to modify each particular one, just select its line, and then you'll get access to its particular data. Those are going to be the basics of creating constant radius and variable radius fillets. Creating 3D chamfers is very similar in many ways to creating fillets. Just like in the fillet tool, you can select a particular edge or more than one edge. And you can also select a face. If you select a face, keep in mind that all of the face's edges are going to be used for the selection. So in this case, we expect these four edges to all be chamfered. Now, similar to the fillet tool, there are some cases, and this is a good example, where you won't be able to access part of the model. And in this case, you may want to select this edge, but it just doesn't let you. In that case, remember, just toggle this off, and now you can select it. Toggle it back on, and there you go. There are three types of chamfers. This is the equal distance, which will create a 45-degree chamfer. And the other two will create a chamfer at an angle, and you can pick the desired one based on the information that you know. Now, just a few words of advice as we close out this video. You'll want to make sure as much as possible that uh, chamfers, especially complex chamfers and fillets, typically happen towards the end of your design. The reason is because when you make a chamfer, it ends up touching a lot of geometry. It modifies a lot of different faces, typically speaking. And the result of that can be, in some cases, that downstream things may mess up. So if you put fillets and chamfers more towards the end of the design, uh, when it's in its more final state than towards the beginning, you can keep that to a minimum and really uh, ensure that your model is as bulletproof as possible. 
It's also a good idea not to try to do too many things in a one particular fillet or a particular chamfer. So if you have 75 inputs to one particular fillet, uh, that's going to potentially cause problems for a few reasons, but least of which is going to be editing it. So try to keep things as simple as you can, break them up into logical groups, and try to place them, generally speaking, towards the end of your design.